call the meeting to order at 5.45. Um, thanks, everybody, for being here on a special occasion, a sort of non-regularly scheduled uh, meeting. I'm also glad to be here this time, to have remembered the meeting. Uh, are there any agenda revisions? Can we add some discussion to um, communications to the community? Um, at, maybe at the end of this meeting and either talk about what the executive committee wants to communicate to the community or what the full board might want to Yeah, sure. So we can add 2.1.3, or actually that's 2.2, I guess, uh, is uh, communication. And I'll just, I'll just say that, you know, I'm fine with that. I, I do want to try to keep to our hour timeline just because be everybody's right. made a special effort to, so whatever we have time for, we can do it. Um, I also will suggest that because we have guests this evening that we'll reverse the order of our two Act 46 items and, and address the, uh, our outreach to Twinfield first uh, so that we can have our friends free to go. Um, any other agenda revisions? Any public comments and correspondence? Executive committee comments. You want me to get a sign-in sheet? I didn't do it. Lisa, are you all set with I think names? I have everybody. I'm going to okay. ask people to go around yeah. and introduce yeah. themselves okay. actually That'd in a second. Great. So. Okay, so we'll move to 2.1.2, uh, uh, which is on here as the Twinfield proposal. Um, so I guess before uh, we get started, Bill and I can report out on uh, kind of our uh, making a connection with uh, Patrick and Mark on the last night with the Twinfield board. Uh, and then we can ask uh, if our colleagues would like to um, say anything as well. But I guess first we'll go around and do some introductions. So I'm Matthew DeGroat. I'm a, I serve on the uh, Worcester Doty School Board and I'm the chair of the Washington Central SU Board. Dorothy Naylor from Callis Board. Steve Look from the East Montpelier Board. Patrick Healy, I represent Marshfield, and I'm also the chair of the Twinfield <coughs> School Board. Bill Kimball, superintendent of schools for Washington Central. I'm Kari Bradley from the U32 board. Chris Winters from the Berlin Elementary Board. Laura Pierce, East Montpelier Elementary Board. Brian Taliaferro, uh, Romney Board. No, Mark Tucker, I'm the superintendent for Washington Northeast Supervisory. No, Chris McVeigh from the Romney Board. Rick Keane from the Callis Board. Okay, thanks. So, uh, if everyone's aware that the executive committee uh, voted at its last meeting to uh, authorize Bill and myself to reach out to the, the Twinfield Board about uh, exploring a possible conversation about um, collaboration, uh, what that might look like, uh, if there's any interest, uh, etc. So. We did that. Our initial meeting was uh, last week. I think it was Friday. Yeah. I already can't remember. Right. Friday. Last Friday. Uh, and uh, we just had a brief meeting uh, here at the central office, and really, you know, didn't come to any conclusions, but just kind of talked about, you know, what we've been asked to do and trying to get a sense of if there was interest. Um, you know, the I would say I would say the response. I think. Uh, Mark and Patrick can speak for themselves, but the response was more or less, um, you know, we've always been interested in conversation, we've just never had anyone to talk to. Um, and uh, Twinfield had a board meeting last night, so we uh, asked if it would be useful for us to go. We did, um, had a spirited conversation there last night. I think anyone that's been in an Act 46 conversation can imagine many of the different dimensions and aspects that, that came up. Um, but generally speaking, the, the board, I think, um, and again, they can speak for themselves, but my sense of that meeting was that there was some interest, at least, in having a conversation. Uh, and I had suggested an idea that uh, each board might appoint uh, two board members to work with the two superintendents to kind of take that conversation to the next level, maybe coming up with a list of questions. Um, and uh, topics and you know a sort of initial discussion uh, and we could do that uh, for Washington Central this evening uh, we could talk about sort of the procedural aspects of that and then the Twinfield board um, has another meeting I think in a couple of weeks in which they could uh, could take that up as well 
So Bill, I don't know if there's anything else to... No, I think it was, you know, it was very positive and optimistic, the meeting the four of us had here last Friday and last night of, hey, let's talk about opportunities uh, and no limits to the conversation where our bounds were put on it. It was like it's worth the conversation and um, I like a, something I've heard from Patrick for two or three years. So I'm always willing to talk about what's gonna provide more opportunities for students. So mm -hmm. that I think is a spirit that was had last night and that's the spirit I saw from the Twinfield board. Mm -hmm. You know, as you said, it was very spirited but that was an overall tone that I heard of yes. about opportunities. So are there any questions or comments from the executive committee members before I uh, invite uh, Patrick and Mark to say anything that I'd like to say? Yeah. Hearing none. Well, we're, we're open to, to discuss. We want to know what are you guys all about. We'd like to, to learn more about um, your, your, your schools and see, you know, we probably, you know, kind of stay up here right now in the clouds a little bit, find out, you know, figure out somewhat of a game plan of what, how we're going to um, lead the conversations and what we're going to talk about. Um, you know, we should probably just start with, you know, who are we and, you know, some of the demographics, numbers and stuff. And then, you know, you look at strengths and, you know, also realize, let's make a list of what the questions from our public are going to be. So that if we get to that, but it's always, you know, I always like to think broad first and then start zeroing in. We have no idea what the, the board is going to do with us, but we just want to talk. We're, we're excited, so um, we're excited that somebody wants to wants to play in this game. <laughs> yeah. um, and we just we just need to, uh, you know, I'm always excited to get out and see other schools and talk to other schools and see see what they're doing. Um, my perspective on this is I think that there are, there are great things that you folks do here, and I think there's some great things that we do at Twinfield. I, I, my suspicion is that neither side knows what the other is good at and what the other could bring to the table, and I think, you know, in terms of representing the interests of, uh, of Twinfield, I think there's some good stories that we can share with you to help you to understand why we think Twinfield is a successful school, and we want to hear from you, you know, what your strengths are, what, you know, I, I think in thinking about what, what I heard at the board last night and what I've heard over the last, I don't know, what did we decide, three and a half years that this has been going on? Um, the focus at Twinfield has always been on what, what are we doing for our kids and what is the best are we doing the best things that we can for the kids? And as long as we're having conversations with that as the kind of the main the main artery running through it, I can say it that way, I think that you know the, the possibilities are almost limitless because um, you know at the end of the day, uh, you know we love the kids that we have, the community loves our school, and I think that those are both those are good two good attributes to bring into any kind of a partnership. Uh, that we might form here or elsewhere. I mean, it's, we're not currently talking to anybody else, but um, you know, Barry was the other SU that the uh, agency secretary had kind of flagged as a potential partner for us, and um, we haven't we haven't had this level of conversation with them because they're right now they're stuck in the 706 process, and I'm trying to find out if they are anywhere near getting unstuck. To be perfectly honest, because we're we want to explore all of our options in the you know in the sense of what's what's good for the for the kids. So, um, but you know as as Matt said and as Bill said, the conversation so far have been very I think positive and cordial. So I haven't seen any red flags. Nothing that I'm concerned about or worried about going into further discussion. So I'm looking forward to seeing what we could do together. Um, we talked last night at the. The, we, the, the board talked last night, some of the members talked last night, kind of stridently about making the case to the state board, you know, and uh, I think as soon as we start talking to the state board about any conversations that we've had with any other district, that's going to start to influence their thinking on where places. Um, 
they kind of left us hanging out there, um, un unassigned and <laughs> uh, unmasked at, this, at the moment. So, uh, but we do intend to go to the state board and report to them on, you know, we've made contact with you folks and how those talks are progressing. And, uh, you know, I suppose it's possible if we never get to sit down with Barry, then, you know, they, they could turn into a fait accompli as far as the state board is concerned. But we'll see what their thinking is. Somebody asked me the other day, well, what are, you, what are they going to do? <laughs> like, I don't know. I don't think any of us really know. We all have our concerns and fears, but we'll see. We'll probably find out. We're at the end, we're in the end, end point of this three and a half year trip, and uh, we're finally going to find out where, where we've been traveling all this time. So, But it's, I'm glad that we're talking. It seems like that the compatibility of the communities would probably be pretty good. With the you know, and I, I'm curious with uh, yeah. if it would be better than Barry. You know, I don't know how to judge that. Have. I mean, I I know I've heard people say that, and I've heard people say it the other way. So I don't, mm -hmm. you know, I don't know how to, I don't know how to assess that right now. I'm not saying you're wrong, but I just, mm -hmm. you know, I don't know enough about it. Pat, right what what I would assess it as, the students are going to be compatible with students all over. Yeah, so <laughs> sometimes we have to put the parents and the community to the side and just say, hey, kids, how can we make it better? Because uh, whenever we have, uh, you know, th you know there's, there's a little disgruntledness between Cabot and Twinfield. And, but when the kids come over for summer school, we had summer school this year of over 100 students, many from Cabot. Um, they all play well. They all work well together. It's, sometimes it's the grown-ups that have issues. Yeah. Cabot players are playing on a so uh, Twinfield soccer team this year. A, we have a cooperative sports agreement. And that's that's going well. You know they wouldn't play otherwise, and they're happy to be playing. So you know it's like Patrick said. It's usually it's not the kids that are having the difficulty with this. They're they'll adapt to pretty much anything. I think it, it kind of comes to that. It seems like. Trying to do things in a way that you know the communities keep their identity in all of it, and not just. Mm -hmm. I think that's one of the great fears, probably. I mean, I've witnessed through this whole process statewide, even. Yeah. You know, it's been heard and felt. <clears throat> I mean, that. Uh, you know, however, that if that, I think it's a good idea to look at this, but keeping that in mind, that I think that helps adults. Sure. Like the transition. To so we are an example of Act 46 because Plainfield and Marshfield got together in the late 60s to, mm -hmm. to develop the high school. Cabot had a choice at that time, but they stayed separate. So I think we're kind of like our mentality is just different mm -hmm. uh, than, than separate schools and um, mm -hmm. separate towns. And you know we kind of have our school in the middle of the two towns. Mm -hmm. It's actually Marshfield, but it doesn't matter. It's in the in the middle of two. Uh, you know, playing fields over here and Marshfield's here. So. Yeah, geographically, yeah, yeah it works center. Yeah, yeah, that's a good. Uh, so, I've ever thought of that, that was a good idea. Well, it's probably thought of together, you know, that's yeah. why it mm -hmm. work. So, we're not, you know, we're not, uh, we don't have playing field versus Marshfield. So, yeah. so, I do just want to acknowledge that, you know, there is this huge towering question mark over what's going to happen with the state board and you know we have a lot of guesses nobody really knows what's behind door number two um, but just acknowledging that there are some sensitivities potentially around that around sure. you know what you're communicating to the state board how it may look uh, you know these kinds of things and um, so you know we'll do our best to try to you know respect that and be sensitive to mm -hmm. it um, and, and vice versa I would hope too but you know I would just echo you know what all of you have said which is that um, the most enjoyable part of the conversation was the, the very explicit focus on you know what we might be able to do together yeah. to produce better opportunities and better outcomes yeah. for kids. Mm -hmm. um, so that's what excites me about about this um, you know, conversation. So with that being said, you know we can have some more discussion. Um, I assume since the committee already voted to pursue this, that there is interest in pursuing it. Mm -hmm. Um, so, um, before we might entertain a motion around, you know, designating a couple of people to, to do this, uh, I guess I just wanted to ask, first of all, if there's any objections to moving forward that way, 
And then secondly, if there are people who either are interested in doing it or would like to nominate someone to do that. Well, as far as people, um, so, I, and I'm not trying to suggest in Kari's the U32 rep, we're going to have two people. I think it's essential that one of the two people be from the U32 board because there has to be, a, I feel like, a strong, you know, I, I would say one from the elementary and one from the high school. Mm -hmm. But I, I, I feel strongly there has to be someone from the high school in those two positions. Are we only picking from executive committee members or any board member from the full board? What I would Even say is that we, may not be here. I mean, that, that raises the procedural question, which yeah. is I think that tonight we can probably take a decision to uh, move forward with this. We, we would probably ask on the 26th at the carousel meeting for the boards to ratify that essentially as a. Um, Are we running into a timing issue? Are we running into a timing issue? Yeah, in terms issue? of picking and picking, you know, it sounds like sooner is better for uh, everyone involved. I, I would suggest the sooner. To start the conversation, yeah. the better, and I and I would suggest that, in my opinion, Matthew had offered this last <clears> night, and I thought about it over the twenty-four hours that <clears throat> there's a place where you want a, there needs to be bigger input and bigger discussions, but to move things faster, move things for, think forward more quickly, to have a smaller group is going to be a better way of doing that and trusting that. To, to gather the quite, you know, it's not making decisions, but it's to gather the information. information. Gather the information. Well, I'm just, my, and my point is only that need it only be uh, someone from the executive committee or can it be someone else to you? Like anyone in this room who is a, a board member uh, who's here and has shown interest. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm open to any suggestions. I do think that the people in this room are you know, up to speed on this already. So maybe have an advantage in terms of getting out of the gate quickly, but yeah. Yeah. to go further, I'd be willing to do the work. <coughs> I'm willing. I don't have any particular bent to do it, um, but I like Stephen's thought that either two was half the student body should be represented. Or you do Scott too, if you're interested. I'm I'm happy obviously to to be part of you know anything any constructive conversations um, and I would share you know with the U thirty two board and, and with you as our representative on that executive committee if you wanted to do it. I'm I have full confidence in you as well, Kurt. But if you thought it would be good to mix up and not have just two small familiar people, um, I don't know if that's an issue. That's good to rock, paper, scissors. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'd be willing to entertain a motion to uh, appoint two people uh, to engage in an exploratory conversation with uh, the Twinfield board. Is, is there a problem with three? A problem with? Three people. I mean, do you folks have Twinfield have any issue with it being three? Well, no, we have no problems with numbers. Okay, then I'm going to move that we appoint Stephen, Kari, and Scott, Scott um, to engage in exploratory conversations with uh, the representatives from the Twinfield board Thanks. community. Is there a second? Second. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Okay, thank you. So, uh, yeah, thanks for being here. All right, thanks. We can set you free. Can, you, can I just get the, the three names so I have them? Scott, I know. Uh, Stephen Look. L O O K E. And Kari, K A R I, Bradley. Mm -hmm. Mark, you and I can email and yeah. put together a list. And yep. I know you have, a, you have what, two weeks to your next meeting? Yeah. To figure out. I thought yeah. I heard 
some possibility of main plus and I didn't sound like it was solidified. Yeah. Okay. You know how that goes. I do know how that goes. <laughs> <laughs> but Mark and I can put together some information packets probably pretty quick on Great. budgets and demographics and things like that. Great. Just you're here. welcome to stay, you're also welcome to go. <laughs> 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 I saw legal on there. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Very much. No, no, thanks for coming to your awards. But, uh, <laughs> Thank you for coming. <laughs> All right. Nice to meet you. See you there. Yeah. Nice. All right, so we will move to uh, 2.1.1 as it is on the agenda. Um, and essentially, the background of this, I'll, I'll just sort of give you my thinking of uh, why I felt, uh, and Bill, I think. Also felt that you know we should be we should call this meeting, um, and I'll invite Scott also to, to comment on this since the the document is one that he drafted. So uh, Scott, um, to his great credit, has been working on uh, trying to uh, imagine or think through, uh, analyze maybe what would be possible ways of addressing. Uh, what, for lack of a better term, I'll call it a debt, a debt issue, uh, if we were to be um, mandated uh, to consolidate by the state board when it issues its plan. And this two-page document uh, that was shared around was the, um, is, are the fruits of his labor. So um, you know, there's a kind of legal argument in here about um, you know, why uh, it's appropriate for us to do this. And then there are four different options of what might be done um, when I got this from, from Scott, I looked it over, I thought there's some interesting stuff in here, but I'm not a lawyer. Um, I, I felt completely unprepared to um, comment on the sort of the legal aspects or ramifications of this or even evaluate it. Um, so I thought we should probably engage uh, our attorney to, to review it and kind of give us some, some thoughts. Um, Bill had a conversation with our attorney. It, it quickly became apparent that we might need two attorneys, uh, given the particular specialties involved here. Um, and that then became apparent that the costs of engaging two attorneys to do hours of research and you know cross comparison and do a written sort of evaluation of this could get high pretty quickly. And that that's something that uh, someone other than myself and Bill you know should be weighing in on. So the the point of bringing it to the executive committee is to discuss, you know, do we want to pursue, uh, do we want to engage attorneys to, to conduct a legal review and maybe give us, even beyond what's in this document, their opinion of, you know, kind of what the law says about, um, you know, debt consolidation and what is possible and what's not possible. Um, and if we do want to do that, then, you know, do we have a certain amount of money that we'd be willing to spend or do we want to cap it at a certain level and, you know, these types of things. So that's the, the point of bringing it to the executive committee. Um, I'd like to back us up just for one second. Same topic. Um, I'm, I'm trying to understand exactly what our options are around articles of agreement. Because as I, as I read through this stuff more, I'm I'm less confident we can be proactive. So I don't know if either of you have any thoughts around that. As I reread everything a week ago, and particularly on the state board's um, thoughts around who could change articles, um, it, it seemed to me those were the articles, period. And there was no opportunity to propose an alternative proactively. It could only be done after the fact. And they were suggesting who could do that after the fact. Yes, since that's come out, there's a lot more delineation than there was in Act 49 about amending articles. Um, I will tell you the first in-depth read where I actually read every word was today. Um, I just haven't had a chance to go through it with that and started to write off a timeline and like which you know which articles could you do that in 
uh, that you know which ones could the voters amend, and they have a summary at the end of the document that says. And there's some pieces that are 60 day, and this I have not mapped out. I need to write it out myself to really totally comprehend it about what can be done through a transitional board to voters to do between 60 days and 90 days after the articles become approved by the state board. And I don't have all that detail done yet, Stephen, but that was part of what I was working on this afternoon for about an hour just trying to map that stuff out of which articles and, you know, there's not only a, there's a time and there's a who can do it and which ones can even be done by voters or the school board. Um, and there's a prior to 90 days and a after 90 days and after a year, different timelines. And I know that some of you in this room have read them a lot more than I have, so I won't say well, I'm tired. But I guess that's what I'm trying to gauge, the ones that may have perhaps read them more. Um, my reread and thinking through it is the articles they have listed are the articles that will in fact be imposed and prior imposition we have no input post imposition we it, it suggests there can be input and who should have the input should it be voters should it be board should it be that stuff but i i could see nothing in, in the language that said we could propose alternative articles prior to a forced merger if it became forced. Everything was post-merger. And I could be wrong. I mean, it's just my reading of it. And as we all know, it's not, <laughs> the, not the easiest <laughs> stuff to go through. So my concern would be if we're going to, would be if we're expending money on lawyers to review something that none of us may be in a position to favor or not favor because it'll be in the hands of a transitional board. It won't be in our hands. Um, I don't necessarily think it's a wasted or a bad decision. I just, before I, I'm comfortable spending money, I would like to have an understanding of if it's proactive or reactive. Well, what, you know, that's an interesting, I can hear what you're saying on this. And the, you know, a possible strategy would be to, uh, with, with that transitional board, I don't know exactly how that's going to be created, but I'm assuming that's going to come out of in the, the articles. Existing, it's, in it's, our, it's spelled articles, out it's precisely spelled out. how it will be. It's yeah. the chair and clerk of every existing okay, board. board. So the question is, could we actually kind of informally come up with you know, basically an agreement that those members, we know who those people would be, and then we actually do do the research now, but then they would be more or less a rubber stamp. And it would be a, you know, it would be a step, it would we'd be depending on honor in that case, because it would not be, they wouldn't be bound. But essentially, if we, you know, did the homework, and we did it, within the bounds of how that's defined in the law, then like, would we be able to basically predetermine what that what those new board members are going to adopt? I don't know, it's just a thought there. You know, that's, they are us, right? I mean, essentially they are made from our board members now. I guess my point is what I'd like everyone, encourage everyone to do, I mean, it's just my, reading interpretation for everyone to closely reread the stuff around yeah. in the, the articles that the state board has presented. And it's, it's all in the first couple paragraphs mm -hmm. because I just, I just took that we had two or three months to propose alternatives. And then when I read it in depth, I didn't see that. I didn't see that we have two or three months to propose alternatives. What I saw, what I saw, just me, was that these would be the articles, and then once they're imposed, these would be the way the articles could be amended. But it would have to be post-merger. So I, I don't see anything 
um, stopping us from exploring this uh, proposal and seeing what the legal ramifications are, whether it can be done, can't be done through the different options. Uh, and if we're looking at a post-forced merger time frame, that sounds fairly short to begin with. Um, I think not having this information at the outset uh, of the beginning of that time frame uh, would be problematic uh, in terms of good decision making. I think we can you know, certainly get answers uh, and you wouldn't bind any transition or transitional board, but it could be advisory. Uh, and you know, this is a hot burning topic for everyone involved. So I think having the answers to the extent that we can get them from a legal perspective at the outset would be helpful. That's smart because I think time is going to hit us if we wait till right, we won't have the time given those deadlines. Well, well and no, go ahead, Dora. Well, I'm a little bit, um, well, not confused, but I definitely got the idea earlier on that the state was going to put out these articles of agreement and that we would have 90 days or if we start now more than 90 days to I got the idea we could write our own so but maybe I'm, I'm not going there whether that's right or wrong what I'm going at is then if their articles of agreement are what are the default articles and we can't change them since the debt the transfer of property and debt of merged district is in those articles. If we're not going to be able to change them, I definitely want to know if I can use one of these. But are we? I I I think we don't really know what we can do at this point. Maybe Bill does. Maybe somebody does. But I have the feeling that we thought we were going to be. I remember being at board meetings where we thought. Folks, you got to get your act together. You're going to have to work on these articles and the budget and do this and that. And now all of a sudden you're saying, no, we can't do anything. And I find that, I, I just, I don't think that's, I don't. Well, my take it. is that you're all partially right, that, that we will have these articles handed down to us. And then we will have a period of time, I think it's 90 days, to amend certain ones. Yeah. That'll be the one of the jobs of the, I think it's the, one of the first jobs of the transitional board is yeah. to set a meeting date and decide what will be proposed. And that, in its 90 days, I think we have you know, very little time to get ready for that. That's right. So what I would suggest is that we do have some legal analysis of what our options are specifically around um, what, you know, what articles could be amended and then specifically around debt. And if we have that information for the next executive committee meeting, then we can plan and move forward. I, I agree wholeheartedly. And also just get a sense of um, what type of uh, legal expertise we need in, in terms of types of lawyers and what our anticipated potential costs may be. Well, that's, I talked to Scott Cameron about that. Yeah. And Scott said, if you want a written opinion, um, he said he doesn't know how many statutes this is going to have to cross-reference into municipal law along with uh, educational law. Um, we talked about, you know, that he was thinking that he may need to work with someone like Paul Giuliani, mm -hmm. uh, who does the fiscal piece of it, but there's the educational piece of that. Um, and he said, I, I asked him what he, what he thought for time, and he said, Bill, I don't know right now. Um, because I don't know what I'm going to unearth and how deep you want us to go. And he said, what do you think? And I said, well, I would think that ranges with our different board members on how deep and how exhaustive. And that's when I came back to Matthew and said, I think you should have a conversation with the executive board about the limit, dollar limit. Mm -hmm. Because not, you know, it's $250 an hour for all the different attorneys we use. That's our retainer. I mean, that's our billable piece depending on which of the four returnees mm -hmm. we use. Um, but that's the, that's what we have for the agreement. So, so yeah. do we, can we kind of stage into this, Chris? Maybe you've got ideas. You know, I, obviously, I mean, they're going to be, we could get into a real rabbit hole here, but is there a way we can engage them at that superficial level and then 
develop that understanding the deeper we go. I mean, I, I'm guessing that this would be really hard to, there's got to be a lot of law around this that they're going to be referencing. So, I mean, I. There's probably not much law around there is it. Is it because they're scrapped? No, because it's, it's an animal. And I think they're. It's a yeah, what? You know, I was, new animal, and it's kind of yeah. Act 46. Right. And, and it's not even the deck. Scott did give me an opinion, yeah. but it was a legal, it was a thought opinion that if you'd like that, he didn't give it to me in writing, he gave mm -hmm. it to me verbally over the phone, I'd be glad to tell you his legal opinion, and you'd have to decide as a board if you want me to do that in the executive session or not. And I'm not trying to do it that way, I just want to know where you go before I tell you what he said. Sure. Um, you know, what his thoughts were about it. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I, Regardless of how it's been, I think it's prudent for us to set up a legal fund with some kind of parameters, some kind of boundary, or but to set it up and to allocate some funds. Because regardless of how it's been, I think we need to have funds available to ask lawyers questions. And, and maybe it's more initially uh, uh, not a deep dive, but you know, what are the thoughts on this or what are the thoughts on that? Or as we head into this process, we would like you to look at what the state board has said and make sure we're understanding the interpretations, that kind of stuff. Could be used anyway, but I think it would be prudent to set up a fund so then it's available. So let me come back to that. No. In a second, but I, I want to. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. I just thought our question is uh, to Rick talking about the rabbit hole. I can't imagine that we're the only uh, set of school districts that are wrestling with this issue. <coughs> and has no one else looked into this already? That some of the legwork might have already been done that we can somehow access or perhaps share the cost beyond. Our walls, or you know, our our towns. If there are other schools that might be also looking, would, this would be helpful. Um, just thought. There are. Uh, I, I just want to give Scott a chance to speak to this <coughs> because he he brought it forward. So I wanted to. Yeah. Um, in answer to your question, Chris, and and you, Brian, if there were such a place, I would love to get to know it because um, the whole thing has felt kind of lonely all this time. Um, there are very definitely other districts that are wrestling with debt issues, but um, I guess they haven't been going down those rabbit holes as much as we have. Um, and, and thank you, Matthew. Um, the reason why I sort of did this, this paper, um, is just to have something, having in mind, you know, the, the very tight timelines. I wasn't thinking so much about the legal aspects of it. it for me, it was mostly just sketching out how we could address the debt issue if we had to. Um, none of these solutions is very good very satisfactory. They're, they're all very messy and cumbersome. And that is, in fact, one of the reasons why we did that Section 9 alternative proposal. Um, however, all of those four, in, in my view, are better than the default articles. So my thought in, in drawing this up was basically because for what you were mentioning, Bill, it, it crosses boundaries from education to uh, municipal law, uh, as well as from education governance to municipal governance. So since each one of these options involves the town, then there should be consultations with the town if they're going to be affected by this. And those, given that, um, you know, the tightness of the timelines, uh, I was thinking those consultations could perhaps begin, even in the absence of 
no um, legal opinion saying which option is, you know, is okay, which maybe is not okay. Um, it may be possible through the consultation process to quickly narrow down what um, what the town what town government <coughs> can live with, um, and what you know what is just not acceptable, so that we wouldn't have to get opinions on all of the all of the options, but just on those that seem to be at least somewhat acceptable. Um, I don't know if that would, you know, make things more efficient, um, but it's part of an education that I think um, I know uh, I still need, and I imagine that, you know, other boards, both school boards and select boards, um, will need as well, in trying to just grasp what, what the implications are of this. <coughs> Yeah, I mean, I would like to say a couple things. Um, and I think we're, we're talking about a kind of a nested bunch of issues all at once. Yeah. Um, I, I don't know to what extent folks have had the opportunity to review the entirety of what the, the Agency of Education and State Board released. Uh, it includes the default articles, commentary, uh, a whole timeline of like what's supposed to unfold when um, it, it's a beast and it really um, you know, this is a ton of things like having a if, if they mandate a merger <clears throat> you know we're supposed to have a, a, a new union district wide public meeting at which all voters would be invited it's warned uh, they would come, transitional board members would be sworn in. There's a whole laundry list of like decisions that the public is supposed to vote on from the floor about sort of how things are supposed to proceed and what's going to happen. Uh, then there's a choice to some extent about whether we want to schedule a second then union district-wide public meeting at which voters could choose to vote to amend the articles that are amendable uh, per, you know, sort of what the state board is saying. Um, you know, meanwhile, you've got this transitional board coming online. You've got, you know, uh, a budget having to get worked up by, you know, the spring. It's, it's nuts. Um, and so there's both the, the just, just sort of purely practical and logistical um, kind of aspects of having to wrap our collective, you know, minds around that and have some discussions about, you know, how would we prepare for that? Um, and there's a question of also, I think, um, you know, I think there are differences of opinion about to what extent uh, or to what lengths uh, we might go to resist some of this or try to change it, uh, what kind of costs we're willing to incur uh, in order to, you know, try to change or resist some of it. Um, and that's a conversation, quite honestly, we have not yet had um, as boards, and one that we have to have very, very soon, I think. Um, so that, that's a much broader sort of constellation of things than, uh, you know, this, than just the debt issue. Um, and I would suggest that we really need to, you know, we can't really get into that conversation tonight, but I would suggest that we at the very least uh, need to get into that conversation at our next executive committee meeting in two weeks, and that we will need to get into that conversation at the carousel meeting on the 26th. Um, it will f form, I think, a substantial part of the agenda that evening. Um, and with that in mind, I would really encourage strongly everyone to read those documents, um, as mind-numbing as they are to look at, um, because there's just incredible information in there. I think Alan Gilbert on our board called it breathtaking. He was really kind of shocked by the speed and scope with which things are supposed to unfold. Well, isn't that, isn't that, is the intent to just, it's almost like a shock and awe where you just don't have time to do anything where it, it sounds to me like that is written. Maybe, maybe what we should do is refuse to do it. 
As well, a, again, as I don't want to have that conversation as a, as tonight. I hear, I, I hear you where you're coming from. from. Um, but I think if we start down, that's, that's, that's the rabbit hole to me, is if we start mm -hmm. talking about that, we'll be here until 2, two o'clock in the morning. No, I get it. Um, but uh, the, I don't know. I mean, it's maybe it's probably a shock and awe thing, but I think you could also read it as someone working backward from the, the dates that are in the law about when the union districts are supposed to be operational, July 1st next year. And if you work backward from there and all the things that have to happen in order for that to be the case with the state board's plan coming on November 30th, you know, someone kind of drew up this, this game plan. But you know, there's, in this process, there's been modification or supposed modification and discussion all along the way. And I can't, you know, this rigidity is kind of odd to me. Because we haven't even had articles. We haven't had a lot of this information until the 11th hour. You know? And to me, this is a strategy that we've seen since the beginning, you know, forcing us into this problem and not really giving time to be able to put thought and effort into this. I mean, this is not the mark of people that know what they're doing in terms of logistically making this kind of change, unless it's done with intent. I don't mean to sound paranoid, but I mean, I, I fairly, I mean, watching this process, I mean, it's been done with some thought and effort. And this really bothers me. You know, I don't know where this is coming from. When everyone, even in this room, and I'm sure all the municipalities around the state, or many of them, are, you know, we're really uncomfortable with this. And now, you know, we're still being in funnel. I mean, every single bit of input that we seem to be put in seems to be peeled away and peeled away. Uh, and to me, this is more like a Nazi <laughs> approach. I mean, I'm, honestly, this is not democracy. These are our communities. These are our schools. This really bothers me that we're even being forced into this. You know, and I, I think we need to put as much work as we can into figuring out what we have to do here with these articles, but it's sounding like we're, yeah, we're putting a lot of work in, and it may be for nothing. We, are we going to still be forced into that same, you know, still right toward the ball yeah. you know, and that shoot? You know, I, I really, you know, the more I see this, the more it really makes me angry, and we're at the point we say no. We just say no, we're not doing this. Take us to court. Come in, take our schools. And maybe that's, maybe so, that's so, where we go. So, Rick, I, I hear you. I do. And I, I'd I, like to say something. I, I, I'm sorry. Yeah. No, you go ahead, okay. Matt, and finish that, but I would like to say something. Um, I would like to have that conversation. Um, but we have okay. 12 minutes left in this meeting. <laughs> and uh, I really do have, for personal reasons, to go, hopefully, at the scheduled end of it. Um, but I just want to note that, that there is a very large conversation, many large conversations to be had, and we have to, um, and I'm, again, I'm suggesting that we cue them up that way, as I've suggested. We also need to have a conversation, I think, about whether we may need to have a more frequent uh, you know, meeting schedule or a different kind of meeting schedule this fall as an executive committee where you know, we're meeting every two weeks, maybe we're scheduling three-hour meetings because it just seems to me like there's a ton of stuff we really mm -hmm. could be talking about. So, um, yeah, I just wanted one comment. Um, Act 49 was written that was not, was to make people in Section 7 that we proposed it not be as strict, any stricter than the um, preferred models, and this to me is str stricter. But never mind that conversation. I think the most important thing for our district, because that's what we worked on so much, our biggest complaint was the debt issue. So for me, either hiring somebody or getting of getting a verbal opinion from the legal people regarding these four options. Uh, uh, to me, something about that is the most important thing right now, then having more meetings is good. But that, I think that's where we need to start because if we can fix anything, that's the one we need to. 
Yeah, I agree with that completely. Okay, I just have a suggestion on back to going to the lawyer that we have a letter from Paul Giuliani from back on February 28, 2017. We asked him this question so we could we could start with that letter and he had given us an option and asked specifically the new lawyer if it's not Paul but I suggest that we start with with Paul if we could use he had said that in title 16 in section 723 there's a, a small piece that said if something is agreed before it, you could within the districts before the district cease to exist that's the part that Marty, I don't know if you guys remember, Marty Edie, and Meza have been working on for a little bit. So if we could just start with that letter. I don't want to spend it personally. I feel like we had, I don't want to go in a rabbit hole. I think I think we got to use the resource. We spent three and a half years looking at, at 46, and there's a lot of stuff that, you know, that we forget that we had looked at. So let's try to use the stuff that we have, have him look at the options which my only problem with the options as they are right now is that they haven't been shared with the boards and that there's more numbers that need to be done for those, in my mind, for those options to be realistic. It, you know, so, so I think it's a good place to start, but it, my only suggestion is like, could we just stick with Paul and maybe say it's a couple of hours and then if there's an opening, then we do, we do, we do more, but if, but that's that's true. But I think we have a lot of resources in there already that we could dig back out. That we're not specific to those options, but it's trying to do something with that. I think that there's agreement within all of the districts that we want to do something different. That you know, the small builders want to feel like it's giving you all the debt, but you know the options are not favorable for for either, right? So we have to figure out a way to make that work if by any chance and in 723 I'm not going to read the whole thing there's a little piece that keeps an opening to yes. maybe have some conversations that's part of yeah. part of this yeah um, I don't know if you remember Flora but Paul um, Paul said yeah uh, the law allows it this is why I refer to it as a head fake yeah. at the state board meeting yeah. because um, it makes it look as though you can do it and then when you try to do it, you can't. Well, because there's other statute because you cease to exist. So what what I'm trying to say is like let's try to just give it to the lawyer, like explore the options and not spend too much time in this because there's so many other things mm -hmm. that we want to make sure we don't want to lose all our time mm -hmm. in in this because there's a lot of articles of agreement and, uh, and we want to be proactive because we have very limited time. So I, I have a, a suggestion. Uh, as a way to kind of tie this up and, and move forward. Um, so again, I think this much larger conversation, critical though it is, is one we can't have this evening. But I agree with what Dorothy said. I think that on the debt issue, you know, we've all discussed this enough, and, and, and it's featured prominently enough in our AGS proposal, which we've all adopted. Um, and I think we all feel some level of dis discomfort on it, um, you know, uh, wherever we may stand on the larger issues. Um, so it seems to me like it's probably worth um, asking an attorney some key questions. Mm -hmm. I think one of them is, and you know, it, the default article that addresses consolidation of uh, assets and liabilities is Article 5. And Article 5 cannot be amended by the board or by voters. So the first question is, do we have any legal argument for uh, contesting that that um, you know stipulation of that the state board is putting in. Um, is there any is there any sort of legal grounds for us to say, well, that's not consistent with the law, and actually there's you know we should we should have the ability to do something different there. That's the first question. And then I think the second question is um, around. Um, I think broadly speaking, if a transfer of, of property between a school district and a town. You know, could reasonably feature um, in some kind of uh, way of dealing with assets and liabilities as they are transferred. Um, and there may be, um, you know, a third question about tax rates, which maybe is down the line. It also strikes me that um, because the debt issue is one that we are, we, we have all expressed our collective concern about, to your point, Stephen, 
um, you know, it, it's valuable for us to have, you know, a considered legal opinion about what even is possible for us to do about that issue or not um, in any eventuality um, that comes down the line. Um, so that's just to address your sort of concern about why are we doing something that we're tilting at windmills, I think, a little bit. That's how I would describe it. So that would be my suggestion, and I think some modest amount of money, like you know, in the three to five thousand dollar range, to authorize, you know, for for attorneys to get started on thinking about that stuff, and maybe even hopefully, you know, who knows if they'll have anything for us to consider in two weeks, or if it's going to take longer than that. But so I'd make a motion, if it's a good point to do that. I was going to say ten. I think tens of dollars at two hundred fifty dollars an hour is forty hours work. I just I, I do want to say I, a little bit of um, you know make the motion as you want, but you were just talking about a legal fund, you know, to deal with a whole host of issues, not mm -hmm. just this one. And I and we've already spent money on our seven or six B committee, and yep. so again, there's a larger question here about sort of what ultimate ceiling of money are we willing to spend on all this different stuff. That's why I'm a little leery about sort of jumping out of the gate with, but well, that, we, that's all I wanted to say. Remember that we've got to live with this, so this is a place, okay. we, if we don't get this okay. right, we're screwed, so. Yeah. Yeah, we're Let going to spend a lot more on that. Right. 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 Let me yeah. finish my motion. Right. So it was to set a ceiling of $10,000 for legal work, and I like the framing of your first two questions around what legal options may exist around this article. I'm not, I'm just trying to frame it. And then the second one, um, and I, I, I won't even attempt to use the same language, but I like those two questions as a starting point. So there would be a pool of money set aside with the understanding that the immediate concern is debt and starting with an opinion on what legal options can be recommended around that, and then again, I, whatever your second question was. Your two questions seem like very good questions to put. The second question was about whether uh, an exchange of assets between a town and a school district could, could feature in some, you know, theoretical mechanism. An agreement, more or less an internal wouldn't, agreement. Wouldn't or? we just focus on these options for him to Well, explore? I think that's what Matthew's that question would cover. does. Just town school. I certainly would encourage the attorneys to look at this, but you know, I would ask them to to go where their training and their you know sort of uh, judgment would take them. Oh, you know we have I mean? to, but to at least look at these and then go beyond with that the debt thing, not every, anything else. Mm -hmm. And I, I would suggest that because uh, you raised Article Five, Matthew, uh, that that we have any legal opinion that is going to not be stopped by it, um, say, because ultimately we may be talking about a political situation in terms of making a proposal to the state board, and if we don't get a legal opinion that you know, goes beyond Article 5 um, about what the potential debt sharing options are, um, I think we'll be in a better situation if we, if we do that. So rather than just say, oh, no, can't do anything about the debt because Article 5, you know, say, okay, what can we do? You know, put Article 5 aside. What makes sense uh, in light of Scott's options? Because then at least we'll have information. And it turns out that we can't do anything because of Article 5, we'll, we'll know that. Um, in terms of the no can I, I'm sorry, because there's a motion. I just want to see if we yeah. have the wording of the motion before um, we... All I have is that Stephen Look moved to set a ceiling of $10,000 for legal work to begin with asking, number one, what legal, op what legal options may exist around Article 5, and number two, whether some exchange of assets between a town and school district is possible, with the understanding that the immediate issue is debt. That's quite have. a motion. Yeah. Yeah. Very Can we just perfect <laughs> like the money, um, because the money is clear, and we can talk about what questions to submit yeah, subsequently. So would there be? Uh, I would take a friendly motion just to make a. Uh, my motion would be to set a ten thousand dollars ceiling for legal work around Act Forty Six. 
On the second uh, six. Okay. And there's a second. So discussion. Thanks. Okay. Um, any opinion that we get should be in writing um, because when you require a lawyer to put it into writing, they put in their rationale and you know verbal opinions can get mucked up and lost and you don't know you may not get to the why that opinion is there. Just that's my opinion. So I would propose that we make sure we have any opinion in writing, even if it's more expensive, because it could fit as something to look at and hold in your hand. I see my fellow Lord and I. <laughs> I'm agreeing with you too. Yeah. Anyway. Yes, go. And um, just to follow on that, if it can include actual language, implementation language that would be that would go in the article because that's what has always tripped us up in the past when people say oh sure you can solve your debt issue um just okay show me how great I'm, i just want to see it and they've never been able to actually show language that does it so i, I would i would be very happy and i think insisting that there be something, they have something to show, and not just sort of um, opining. Yeah, on the theoretical possibility. Yeah. That's, that's one of my concerns about. I like Paul, and I'll be going back to Paul to ask what that's frankly one of my concerns about. Well, yeah. yeah. Could, I, could so, I make a point of clarification yeah, here? Right. Sure. There's a motion on the table that specifically yeah. does not address specifics. Right. Just and because my impression was no one wanted to talk specifics at this time. So I would like us to vote on the motion. And then when we come together at our next meeting, then we'll begin to refine what the specifics were. If I understand you correctly, <coughs> what you're saying then is that we would be asking Bill to wait to spend any of that money or engage the services of attorneys on these questions until we meet again? I was trying to suggest what the questions might be. And, and I got pushback. Right. Well, order. We did um, have a motion and a second, just about the 10,000. We never had a vote on it. We really didn't discuss that. I would like to have a vote on that. And then if we want to go beyond that, we have to do that. Okay, so there is a, a call for a vote on the motion that's on the table. The motion is, Lisa, could you read it back yeah, once again for a, my sake? To set a ceiling of $10,000 for legal work around Act 46. And uh, do you want to specify it to the debt or to, or not Article 5? Around Act 46, that's the motion. That okay, that's, that's fine. I just want to, that's it. Okay, is there any further dis discussion, excuse me? Yeah, I don't think that goes far enough. I don't think we want to wait two weeks to ask the question. The question is, do we have any legal options with regard to debt? So if we got a yes or no to that, then that would answer, that would set us on our next step in this journey. What do we want to say specifically? What legal options? I mean, that you don't want to just... Yeah, you know, I would yeah. Know. If the answer is yes, then yeah. I'd like to know... Specifically. Con conceptually, and then I'd like to know specifically. But um, I, think I don't want to wait two weeks. I think as a point of order, you would have to move to amend the motion. Okay. Well, I will move to amend, friendly amendment, um, uh, to ask the lawyer to let us um, assess whether we have legal options with regard to debt. And if we do, um, some indication of what they are. In an amount not to exceed? $10,000. As the person making the motion, I would accept that friendly amendment. As the person who signed that? Okay. All right. Is there any further discussion of that amendment, or that uh, motion? Yes. Um, friendly amendment to the friendly amendment to incorporate um, Scott's work as a, a, a consideration for the attorneys to look at. Um, so it's not just a blank, because we've already discussed yeah. it as a blank. So I would move that uh, as part of the attorney's consideration, they take into account Scott's two-page document detailing uh, potential options. Could I ask um, if it would be possible, rather than including that in the motion language, that we just mm -hmm. 
direct the superintendent yeah. to, yeah. to oh, make sure yeah. that. That's fine. That's fine with me too. I got the direction. Okay. Yes. And that way we just keep the motion a little bit more. We'll keep growing out at the door. <laughs> so, is there any further discussion? Does anyone need the motion read back again so that we know everyone's comfortable? Okay, all those in favor of uh, the motion, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Motion carries. Um, I guess I should have asked actually before doing that, um, Bill, to what extent are the, <coughs> the budget will bear. Um, the budget will not bear, but the general fund will. Okay. So you're telling me I am taking, I am interpreting this to use fund balance towards that right. work. Okay. And I can figure that out. I don't need more help. <laughs> <laughs> so we are six minutes over, and I really want to be respectful of everyone's time, including my own. Mm -hmm. um, so, Kari, would you be. Is there anything really urgent that you wanted to bring about communication? Something that we needed to get out right away, or do you feel like I think we have, I feel a responsibility to communicate something to the public, yeah. either as a result of tonight's meeting or um, our next one. Yeah. Actually, I think the next one would be fine. Yeah. I'll just mention that the Doty Board actually um, decided to communicate something out to Worcester about sort of what's going on. Um, I don't know sort of where you know, rightly the communication responsibility falls, or maybe it falls on all the boards, I don't know. Um, but that maybe there isn't that I don't feel quite as... Well, we, we just um, decided to engage exploration with Twinfield. Uh, right. That, I assume, is going to be in the local mm. media soon. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> fair. It's a fair assumption. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'd rather they hear it from us, I guess, so... Um, yeah. Could it be tonight? Yeah. Yeah. Someone getting so just getting well. Okay, maybe not. Maybe not from us first, but well, I, I can communicate something out. Um, you know, via front porch forums or it's wherever. Like if we get it to mail, put it out. On yeah, just a brief yeah. a brief statement saying uh, about opening the conversation with Twinfield. Certainly, I could also just note that the state board has issued its draft articles of agreement, and we're you know grappling with. And we're on it. And we're, yeah, we're on it. <laughs> or it's on us. <laughs> yeah. I, I think grappling with it is a good term. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so our next meeting will be on the 19th. Uh, I may, uh, if no one objects, plan for it to be a slightly longer meeting. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, I'll look forward to seeing you then. And if there are no, no other matters, then we're adjourned at 6.53. Thank you. Thank you.